Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to the Woodsmith Shop. You know, it could be said about woodworking that it's really nothing more than cutting up pieces of wood and just joining them together. But sometimes when you do that, it turns into something spectacular. Like this updated version of a sideboard table. It's one of my favorite projects. Well, it all starts out by cutting tapered legs and joining them with end panels. And then those assemblies are joined together with rails with twin mortise and tenon. Well, that creates openings for the drawers. So next it's on to making the drawers, and that's done with dovetail joinery. But we added a false front with curly maple veneer, and then my favorite feature, this bead mold framing around the edge of every drawer. Well, it all tops off with the top, again, with curly maple veneer, and this time with curly maple edging. Well, this whole project comes together when we add the finish, and then the grain really just pops off. Well, I'm ready to start building this curly maple sideboard table. So stick around for the Woodsmith Shop. Major funding for the Woodsmith Shop has been provided by Craig. From the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help to simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Additional funding provided by Powermatic. For more than 90 years, Powermatic has made tools that deliver woodworking performance. Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. And by Old Masters, a legacy of craftsman quality stains and finishes. You know, Terry, this classic sideboard is actually based on an antique design, but just updated a little bit. It's actually a side table right. with part of a cupboard underneath. Now, we've kept some of the original details, like the tapered legs, the dovetail drawers, even the solid brass hardware, but we've done, made some changes to make it easier to build. Well, we started by making the basic case out of plywood, but then we covered it with this curly maple veneer. Now this has a couple of advantages. First, you don't have to worry about wood movement and it gives you the chance to create some pretty spectacular panels. Well, it's a beautiful piece of furniture and like every piece of furniture, it starts with a good set of plans. Well, if you'd like the free set of plans from the editors of Woodsmith Magazine, just go to our website, woodsmithshop.com. Once you have a set of plans, you're ready to start building and the first step is to make the legs and that's what I'm gonna do next. The first step to building this project is to make the legs. Now the legs start out as square blanks that have been cut to finish length like I have here. Then there's going to be a series of mortises cut in each leg. To start with, there's a long shallow mortise that's going to accept this end panel. Now there's also mortises for the upper and the lower rail, but not just one mortise. I'm going to make two mortises. So why two mortises? Well, if I make one large mortise and one large tenon, I'd actually end up with kind of a weak glue joint. So instead, I'm going to make two mortises and two tenons. That way, I'm going to get twice as much good glue surface, and I'm going to end up with a really strong joint. Well, making twin mortises isn't hard. The challenge, though, is figuring out which face gets which mortise. So to help keep everything straight, it's a good idea to go ahead and lay out all the mortise locations. Then once that's done, you can head over to the drill press. At the drill press, I'm going to drill a series of overlapping holes. Then I can square up the mortises with the chisel. Now you could certainly use that same technique to make the long mortise, but to be honest with you, that means drilling a lot of holes. So I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to use the router table. A quick way to make the long mortises in the legs is to use a router table. Now I've installed a quarter inch straight bit and I've positioned the fence so that it aligns with my layout marks. I've also installed a stop down here that's going to limit the length of the mortise. Now all I have to do is turn on the router, push the workpiece over the bit until it contacts the stop. 
There, a quick way to make a long mortise. Now all I have to do is just square up the ends.